What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Third Person. This is the Third Person Podcast. My name is Chris, and with me, as always, are my buddies, Jesse and Mike. You are a pirate. I said that weird, I know. Whatever. So, Guys, welcome welcome back to the discussion. Welcome back. Where, where were you? We're just starting. You're not, yes, don't worry yeah. about it. You didn't miss anything. We're just starting the discussion for Into the Badlands, Episode 7, Season 2, Blackheart, White Mountain. That's right. I said it. Um, Blackheart, White Mountain. Yeah, so who who knows about this episode? Who, who can tell me about this uh, episode? Well, I know a little bit about this episode. Uh, Sonny struggles with his inner demons. Damn right he Are they really his inner demons, though? Uh, his friends cannot find a way to help him, but can't they? Uh, meanwhile, the Widow has a new deadly partner who helps her exact revenge on her enemies. What Not really that new of a partner. And is it really revenge? No, yeah, it is yeah. a really, yeah, it's it most definitely revenge. A little bit of revenge. Yeah, it's revenge. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. So speaking, little so bit. speaking of that, why don't we jump on to, uh, let's, let's just talk about Widow. Widow? I thought I wrote Window. The Window. Let's talk about Window. The Window. And, and Quinn window. and Jade. Um, Mr. Window. So wait, so this is funny. Let's just really quickly, because I have to say how, how silly this is. So Jade, Jade's in there, right? And she's, you know, taking her bath and she's like, hey, handmaiden girl, whatever her name is, Mary Haven, whatever, the, whatever her name was. She's, she says, come and help. My water's cold, gets out and they're stealing shit. And everyone's, she looks outside, all the clippers and cogs, they're all running around, they're all running away and people are stealing shit. Put that away. And the bitch walks up to her and slaps her and then kicks Perfect. her while she's on the ground. I was like, what the hell? Good. You deserved it. You're an asshole. But, and I'm not condoning violence against women, but if it's woman-on-woman violence, that's perfectly fine. So I do not condone this message at all. <laughs> so, but I thought it was just hilarious that, 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 like, that she, so then they have to leave really quickly. So the next scene is of them trying to leave the estate. And she's got on this fur coat thing wrapped up. She's got her earrings on and her makeup done. I'm like, Really? I thought you had to leave <laughs> real quick. Yeah. She had to accessorize. That bitch should have oh. just thrown on boots and ran out in a damn fucking stupid whatever she the, the robe and got on a damn horse and went away. Anyway. That would have yeah. I digress. That would have been very uncomfortable. Well, yeah, well, you wanna be you you wanna protect your asshole or you want or you want that asshole intact? Do <laughs> you wanna continue to use your asshole? Or not? Well that, luckily that, luckily she didn't have to protect it. And Quinn, uh, Quinn had his little creep factor, like so, uh, yeah. So they, so they show up. So the widow shows up and puts puts her boot full of dog shit on her neck, and um, you know, I don't, it's just it was sad bitch. That bitch was just what a, what a sad, it was pretty hilarious. Yeah, what a sad pile that bitch was. It was, and I'm talking about Jade now, and you know, and then Quinn, Quinn rolls up and he does his little Quinn, does Quinn moves, does, does him doing Quinn moves, all right. Tell him d- like those sweet southern names that make her submit to him. Yeah, then we then we had Jade go, just kill me. And Jesse said, please, please kill yeah. her. Now it's about time, right? He should have did it way back. And he oh. didn't. He let no. me down this episode. He won't kill her. He still like likes her, man. He's not going to kill her. Don't you know anything about Quinn? He won't kill women. He's like, he loves mm-hmm. women. He's not going to. He. You could do anything to him. If you're a woman, you could do whatever. Look at all of the, every single woman in his life has fucked him over one way or another. Am I wrong? No, That's I'm not. True. Lydia, Jade, uh, Vale. What? What's her? The Vail? widow, Vale. Everybody, everybody has his mom. Probably, I'm assuming. Probably. <laughs> no, 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 he did kill Vale's mother. That wasn't really someone in his life, though. He didn't. He I didn't mean, have any type the, of relationship with that woman. Well, I mean, her husband was his doctor, and yeah. like. Yeah, but so, whatever. Jesse, just, come on. Kind of mentally, let it go. Let it go. He didn't man. get the news that he, he really reaching. wanted. Quit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. he killed her. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so not a lot going on there. But um, you know, but he she, did has, she has to pack her fucking bags and get the fuck out. He said he's going to drop her at the edge of the bo- the the borderlands, the border of the badlands. Yeah. He said, I think. Yeah. Yeah, border of the badlands. Now, did we think that the widow liked that idea or no? New. No. Seemed like she wanted to uh, handle the business, but you know, like they say, the 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 widow won't kill other women, or she supposed to really doing no, that. No, but we know someone who will. Yeah. No, so, yeah yes, yeah. we do. Your guys' uh, favorite moniker for her is Jared Leto, which you now have me calling her, mm-hmm. but uh, Tilda. Tilda, yeah. She'll See kill a bitch happening. right quick. She'll kill a bitch right, right quick. 
Yeah. So I'm I'm assuming even though Quinn banished her, we're gonna see her again, right? Oh, of course. Ah, yeah, we'll I, I'm sure we're so. gonna get a season three, and she's gonna be probably a mild part in it. Little dirty dog. Or she yeah. might get it. She might. Let's let's get let's it. let's uh let's leave that little trollop alone and get trollop. All right, so uh, yeah, the real good stuff. So okay, so the next set, the next part of the, the whole the whole rest of the ep, not the whole rest, but the whole other half of the episode story wise was M K Baji and Sunny. Yeah. You know, Sunny was in his fever dream dealing with his demons while the other two were were um, you know j- jabbing and jiving and trying to save Sunny. You know, uh, jabbing and jiving. Jabbing and jiving. So let's talk about and first of all, that Mad Max car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, I will call it the knockoff because it's a little cheesy. But can nobody say Baji's name? It's Beiji, Baji. They call him Boji. Boji. Like every his name was like, if I were him, I, I'd be like. I'm so confused at this point. I switch between Baji and Beiji. I like Baji <laughs> and Beiji. I think I like Beiji better. I think I like, I think Beiji, I like Beiji, Beiji a little bit better too. So I'm gonna call him Beiji, and then I'm but I'll forget and call him Baji or Bo, Bogey. I'll probably call him Bogey later. I'm gonna call him Charlie. Call him to the Mohawk Mobile. Charles Knack, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they had some cool dialogue. They had some interesting dialogue. I mentioned it in the review and the lot of reaction, and I might as well mm-hmm. mention it here. Some of the actual dialogue was a little too modern for my taste when he talks about their dicks being out or showing them their dicks, and he's calling them an asshole. And I was like, that, that we haven't really heard anyone speak like that in this series yet. Nick Frost extent. adds his own flair. Nick, yeah, so they Nick, have to add something. Yeah. They're writing in for him, obviously, because yeah. he's you know that funny comedic kind of guy. So uh, you know, obviously, maybe they put it on a little too thick. You know, yeah. so it didn't seem so forced. Nick Frost um, is a strong, independent comedian who don't need no man. Yeah, it was cool though. I mean, we all we all agreed on this too. You know, we all agreed that we enjoyed. The Baji and and MK uh, dialogue back and forth, and it was cool to to get a, a better idea of what happened to Baji and and how he lost his his gift and and about his his novice that he was training Flea. When he was in so Abbott, to me, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that was interesting. So um, let's you know let's see where where that goes because you know after they find out it took a put it this way it took a little 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 bit of pushing from mk for them to even leave the hotel initially when when sunny was injured he was gonna just let him die yeah basically was just gonna let him die because he didn't think there was any way to do it even though he knew there was a way to do it um but let me ask you this beiji so beiji gave up his power i thought i thought he said that he gave he gave her his power no, he let her leave. She was in the room. Okay, but with but how needles. does that translate to him losing his power? He, he gave, gave up his power up. to save hers. Yeah. To what, save what, her. what? I don't. To, okay, but explain it. So, so I take it as if you take the power, you take their more or less life somewhat. It leaves them like a husk of themselves. Therefore, he willingly transferred his power, but not his soul, to her. That's what I said. And so he gave her his power. He he gave her his power in order for her to think, survive and get out. No, of that's there. what he said, though, Mike. That's what. No, no, I don't take it like that. I took it as the fact that he just because he said something like um, the spiritual mumbo jumbo or something. So he said when she was on the table with the needles, he he gave up his power to somehow release her from that that situation that well, see, that doesn't make any sense room. though but that doesn't no, make any sense I'm, I'm pretty sure he said he transferred he transferred to yeah well i mean you can go back and watch it but i'm he said what do you think happened yeah. to her and then and mk was like yeah oh yeah yeah okay i get it he's they like take... he freed her that was and the only he said way she because he said it happened to that. one of my friends and then and then right but then he, no but she no she doesn't he, have that power she anymore. didn't have the power and after the fact, from... after the fact, he, they already took it from her. And no, after they were the taking fact, taking it from her on the table when I she was getting, so. she was no, getting penalized. We, we for gotta go. All yes, but people. what I'm saying is they already took it, and to and he helped her escape by giving her no, his they were, power. They were they were taking it like they were taking the power from the other kid. Okay, so we, we found out that something happens to those people. They become like a shell of themselves. He gave her his power in some form or fashion, therefore his power is no longer there for him, and he saved her life. We do not know if she has the power or if she does not no, have the power. We'll find out doesn't. later on. She does. Let's get past this part. Of the Mike, discussion. you're so adamant, but you don't know. <laughs> I, know I do know. That's you what he said. You don't know. I'm telling you, you right. don't he know. He literally said verbatim, I, I gave, I her gave my, power. my power up yeah. for her. 
so that so, you know he gave that the power. could translate what, either way so there we go what you know i just i wonder if we're gonna see her i i, I actually wonder if it's someone we already know Tilda? but we don't know any other ones other than the people now at the at the monastery we don't know anyone outside of this the the, the regular cast that has that power but that's not to say that that we won't see so if i wonder if it's years old at the time how old would she be now that's the question well, you figure she'd at least be at late, least? late you teens. Long, you don't know like how many. 20? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't know how long he's been away from the monastery. Nah. This could have been, you know, five, ten. Who the fuck knows? You know, but yeah. So I'm sure. I'm sure they're setting up a lot of things. They're letting Jade go off into the wild. Uh, I mean, he stole that compass, so he must think that he's or she's at like you know the sanctuary. Or well, he place. believes in that. He believes nah. that too. So either way, okay. So they go. So they do this plan to go and save Sunny, where they, MK says we got to go back in there, break in there, and get this stuff. And all, all of a sudden, Beiji knows of, of the things to use. Now we got to find scrolls, and then we got to find this little satchel full of these needles. Um, that part of them um, bringing Sunny back was a little, a little cheesy for me because you just had to <laughs> stab needles into those parts like really well you need a scroll for that to take the power he had a vial there and if it can take the power it should be able to take you know the poison the fight i get that but i think it was edited like shit because that did not come across great yeah it was kind of yeah it was a little cheesy it didn't come across great there was no explanation to it and sometimes like i I don't want to have explanations but in this case it it would have been nice if it was like okay yeah we need to use this because this is gonna do this and this I don't know. I, I think it was kind of explained because uh, when MK found the needles, he said, "Needles." And so that said, they yeah, take the yeah, power, they're going to come in handy. Yeah, yeah. And more or less, that was the explanation there. Whatever. Hey, that's what we're yeah. going to use. That's Look, how we're I mean, extract. these guys are flipping backward. Look, <laughs> Nick Frost's character did a complete backflip off onto you know when he was on the top of that table. So. And it was perfectly fine. So you're looking at a show that does that. Um, can we just briefly talk about that fight scene though? In that, in there, uh, what a cool, yeah. what a cool way to escape. Like quick thinking by Beiji. You know, he says, "Cut the novices." So they're fighting novices and abbots, and yeah. they're all against them. But then he says, "Cut the the novices," which they do, and then they they immediately just start fighting the abbots. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Why would they stop? Like literally, at one point, they he one guy gets cut and literally turns around and stops fighting Beiji and just starts ki- yeah, kicks the dude in the back. And so I was I like, have two things on that. Um, one, maybe because it's not them, it's their inner self, the you know evil, quote unquote. No, well, yeah, I get, I get that. That that's you know because the whole point of the story with Flea was that she went to go save these captors from these nomads or whatever. And mm-hmm. she ended up killing everybody, including yeah. the people she was trying to save. So, yeah, I get it. She doesn't know what the fuck. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. I just thought, again, that could have been, you know, done a or little bit better. Or it could but. also be the inner them influenced by MK's speech previously. Perhaps. That is that is That's, true. That was my second theory. The speech in which he was like, they're just using you. And that was the speech. Yeah, yeah was pretty much. Yeah. But either way, the point. They're cool, using you. cool shit, though. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that a lot. And then the... the um. We didn't see what happened to the master. Obviously, she survives, but you know, there's a whole group. All of the novices go. They wipe out all the abbots, and then they, you know, which is can I just okay? Hold on now. So you're telling me the novices killed the abbots, but don't the abbots have the ability to use the power whenever they want? So why did they yes. die? How could they not have? They beaten? probably didn't have time to channel it because, as we saw last episode, they did have to have a little bit of time to channel no, it. No, that was I agree, but also I disagree because they they yeah. channeled very specifically at one point. But other than that, they fucking they were able to just it just happens to for them. Huh? So I don't know. I think we're thinking about it way too hard. A little too tactical. Right? That it was just. I think it was just uh, just a cool fight scene, and they needed them to escape somehow, and that was their scapegoat fight. These are the questions that need to be answered. I love them answered. using the carving knife to slit their freaking arms. It, it was yeah. good. That was, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was a really cool, it was a great concept. I really enjoyed that particular, you know, Very Nick uh, Frost-esque thing. weapon. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else with these guys? Good road trip. It was a good road trip episode <laughs> for them. Yeah, uh, good road trip. Good dialogue down there by the uh, little down river. By the creek. Over there by the creek, you know, they were down there, a little, little, little jabbing and jiving a little bit towards it. That's it, you know. They got to get the rest of the jabbing and jiving in there. Yeah. Um, and um, and then you know, 
so the whole time Sonny is in his fever dream in, inside this death dream or whatever's happening um, which you called apropos absolutely yeah and um, I don't know man I thought it was cool I think we all enjoyed the fact that even though we're kind of done with that trope of oh yeah while they're dying they have to go into a coma dream whatever you know like they go into a coma and then they have this dream like uh, I just finished watching I'm, I'm like in the last season of the Sopranos and at one point that's what happens he goes into like a coma and he's in a he's in this dream yeah. for like three episodes right he's uh, while he's in the coma and all these things are happening around them and he's pulling them into the dream and so this is the same thing that's happening to Sonny where he's seeing all this weird creepy shit but the difference here is that it's creepy shit and they actually did like hands under the bed and a hand grabbing yeah. your throat and seeing out of this corner like really creepy Couple of them actually it, was, got it, was, it was it was poison you know that's what we you know he's he's obviously poisoned and you remember um Baji was like all right this 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 one finger is for the brain. This one finger is for the kidneys. This one finger is for the lungs, or whatever. Chest, yeah. So obviously, the brain portion of it is where they first mentioned. I forget exactly how he said it, but he said like, "Oh, the brain's uh, like the first one, or now that's the initial one that that's getting attacked." So it makes sense to see his brain being poisoned, and that's why he's in this right. state where he's seeing all this fighting crazy his shit. demons. Is, is yeah. What yeah. Calling it. But yeah, I thought it was a pretty cool like a scary little little horror thing which is pretty cool it makes me believe like if if they went that route they could pull that off in this show you know what i mean yeah i mean it was eerie it was cool with like you know the with the visual of of the cabin it was a very eerie place and yeah. it wasn't um like true color it was like like gray tones to the to the to the yeah. video yeah so it made it look very dreary and with this fog like jesse had mentioned too in, in the review so um yeah, it was cool to see, obviously, Henry also, and how um, Sonny is, is potentially struggling with how this kid, you know, may grow up, even though he doesn't know that Vale had the child and all this kind of stuff yet. But it kind of, you know, it kind of gave me a little glimpse of this is what this kid could grow up to be, and how will Sonny deal with this when he does, in fact, meet Vale, which I'm sure he will. Well, and, he doesn't want his son to be son. like him. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm wondering how that's going to, you know, how that's going to come to to fruition eventually. Uh, I don't know, but I mentioned it like as soon as he said Henry. I was like, how does he know they had a contingency plan? If he has, if she had a son, Henry. Yeah. yeah that figure. was cool. Yeah. They definitely, yeah. They, she, yeah. you know, so, um, and that kid, boy, did that kid look like a mix between them two? It really did. Yeah. Sometimes they cast really crappy, but that was cast really well. That yeah. was pretty cool. Yep. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, so very, very creepy stuff. And, and so towards the end of it, you know, so he's being basically haunted this whole time. And things are happening. And it was actually really cool because, like, it's like, it's like, it was like a regular movie how things happen to the children. And, oh, and now the mom has to get the kid out of there because something's happening and the dad's got to deal with it. You know what I mean? Like, it was like a short, little, compact version of, say, like... Um, uh, insidious or something you know what I mean like uh, it was really cool and at the end he confronts he, he, he confronts or he's confronted by this Artemis uh, character who happens to be a, a little girl that was collateral damage in one of his clippings right yeah and her, then, and her brother right and then all of these all of the dead souls that he's that he's killed that he's clipped start attacking him and there's obviously over 400 of them they all start coming at him yeah and as he's getting attacked um you know, he gets sliced and it's that burning effect, you know, of the slice, which is so freaking cool. And we've never seen that. I don't think we've seen that before. Especially not I don't in the show, think but... we've seen that in the show. No. Not in the yeah, show, no. but like, I think anywhere that was fucking cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it was, like, it was really yeah. cool. I'm don't, I can't think off the top of my head if I've seen that anywhere mm-hmm. though. But Maybe again, a few again, animated things. I mean, another, another section where, you know, the story that it was very, very cool. And I had mentioned it, in one of the videos we did for this, the other ones where to me, I think the reviewer, it was like, to me, it reminded me of an anime. Like that would be like, that's like an end scene to an anime where you've got to fight all the souls that you've killed or video game too. You know, you know where you got to come fight all of those, all those souls. Um, Yeah. And then the bloody, and then as he's fighting his tattoos, his shirt gets torn off and his, the tattoos aren't tattoos anymore. They're bloody like welts burned. Like they're like bloody burns and stuff. And then that transfers over to the real uh, real world. 
right where his back was bleeding as he was basically dying you know um i don't know really cool sequence i enjoyed the way they ended it um because mm-hmm. again at first i was like eh. like i really like that last scene between mk and sunny when he's like you're the closest thing i have to family sunny and it's like dang that yeah. was really good <laughs> yeah they they I'm glad they're back, and yeah, I mean, this was a great episode. I mean, it, you know, Jesse Jesse scored some of the sections pretty high. Um, I gave everything at least a four. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, this was when and when you come down to it, I think this was a more than a middle middling episode. I think this was, you know, yeah, obviously slightly above middling, um, or not slightly, but definitely above it. And uh, no, it was good. It was good to sort of. We have three left. I'm willing to say it's the best episode this season. Really. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. to me it, it engrossed me more than even the you know barren conference trial thing like I could not take my eyes off the screen this yeah time oh I don't know I mean I don't know if I'd say that because I really enjoyed the Nathaniel Moon episode because we got to see it yeah flipper. that's true and then the, the, the council episode was, was the court it's tied with Nathaniel Moon really good too like that yeah. was a cool yeah. episode because yeah. I think I, I scored Nathaniel Moon a complete 4.5 and I scored this one a four. Yeah, I think I think they started getting a little. We sc- started scoring them a little less after the court episode, after, after yeah. we, the the return of Quinn and, and and he killed his son and everything. And Jade becoming Baron. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because those, those, the last couple haven't been that great. Still, yeah. still. I mean, still great. We. I mean, every episode pushes it forward. Some some shows. You know, like let's let, let's be honest. The Walking Dead. We love The Walking Dead, but there are episodes in there where it, nothing happens. Absolutely. And it's just <laughs> setting up for the next big set piece, you know, event. Or and, giving us horrible CGI and horrible deer in there, you know. <laughs> zombie gra- zombie Never makeup looks great, but you know, no, we won't. Um, but you know where it all went. It went to the tiger, not yeah. the, not the the deer. Yeah, that last scene. Uh, those last scenes there with Shiva. Yeah, but I mean. I don't know about you, but like these, this, maybe because it's like practical blood and gore. So that's what I was thinking. The blood flowing there at the end, you could tell some of it was practical and you could tell some of it was CGI, but it was really well done CGI. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed that CGI and it looked great, even though it wasn't, yeah. you know, fully real. You know, what's cool about this show is their blood work. Like, I think that's their signature. Like, especially this yeah. season, I think they're like, yo, one of our signature things is going to be blood, like in the way we handle blood and the way we do blood and mm-hmm. the way we show it. And um, it's very stylistic. And, 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 and I'd like them to know that that hasn't gone past us. Like, we're fully aware yeah. that you guys, that's part of your of the deal. And that's yeah. what you guys are doing because, you know, we, we see it, we like it, we love it. It looks great. You're doing a great job with that, and it's a it's a part of the the story. It's a part of the world. You know, it's like the, the I've fact really enjoyed this blood. season. This is this is great. This is better than I actually thought it. Was, not that I thought it was going to be bad, but this is like better than I would have thought it, it was going to be. Yeah. Because obviously we don't know what it's going to be. You don't know where it's going to go. But we only got really, three episodes left. I know, and it's gone <laughs> really fast, and I'm really enjoying it, and you know. I just feel like it's like they they did it. They did really well this season. They pushed this shit forward. We're definitely even if we're not going to get everything answered, which we most likely won't, obviously, because we need to have more no. seasons. But we're yeah. definitely in a po- in a point where it's like, wow, these characters started here and now they're here, and and you know, and and it's just great. I like it. I like it a lot. You know, it, it's yeah. a fun show. And it's definitely something to look forward to. You know, um, yeah. any last thoughts on what went down? Uh, no, but I would definitely want to see two more seasons from this show based on this season alone. Only two? At least two. I would like to see, because you're dealing with the generational thing, I would yeah. love to see, like, a new cast roll up. Think about it. Like, at the yeah. end, like, Sunny, I mean, and you still have, like, a lot of them in there, but however it goes in, out, whether all of them are going to, like, if you're going to end it, say, say two more seasons. Right, and then you kill off most of the barons and and everyone. And Sonny probably it's only Sonny left as an old. Sonny doesn't now. die, but you know, and then they start a whole new thing, and then it's similar to like The Walking Dead, where it does like a time jump. Yeah, and now you have new barons, or maybe they maybe they do a whole new system of whatever, 
and now you have new barons or new clippers, new types of cop, you know, whatever. Like, but they yeah. did push it forward. Maybe they learned about the old world, and they're incorporating that something. Like, they could do they could do so much with this, and it doesn't have to stay the same. Absolutely. Know? And it could be generational. It could be, you know, because I'm I'm fascinated with with generational type of stuff with you know things that happened in the past and then now it's translated into the future like it's so cool you know so that, especially with people but anyway yeah i think yeah. i think that i think yeah i, I mean I, think I we definitely want this to to keep going you know mike any final thoughts there no i mean overall um you know we're, we're getting to that point where we're gonna you know i i mean we're we, we're we're learning where everybody is just like you guys said we now know where everybody's headed Let's see what they do within these next few episodes to, you know, I'm not sure where this will end if it does last a couple, couple more seasons, but, um, I'm assuming that it's going to end with almost, almost similar to Sonny's nightmare, but uh, the opposite in the fact that it'll be a nice little cabin kind of a thing with his wife and his kid. I don't think he's going to continue clipping, especially when he, you know, when he finds them. You know, I can see them. Eyes. Well, I mean, he's, yeah, he's I... kind of, he's essentially stopped clipping now. It's just, he's just fighting for his life. Yeah, he's fighting for whatever. Yeah, exactly. But I can definitely see, like, a, a peaceful ending with, with, with this show. But let's see what happens with these, how much they're going to give us for these next three, yeah. you know, next yeah. three episodes. Yeah. I hope, I hope they do something big. I'd, I'd like, I'd like, and I don't even know, dude, there's so much going on right now. I don't even know where I want it to be. Like, I don't know where I want it everyone to be at this point you know it's fucking crazy yeah. um all right so th- that's gonna do it for us on this discussion for into the badlands episode seven season two um mike where can everyone get to us at everybody can get to us on all social medias of course at third person pod reach uh, look for us on youtube especially because we like um answering all your comments and questions that you have for us on these episodes uh, but definitely don't forget about itunes uh you can check us out there uh also instagram and facebook you know we just love hearing from you guys so just uh keep it up yep definitely and uh, don't forget to go check out the live reaction and the review for this episode so you get the complete trilogy trip tet three videos for every episode so round it out go go watch those other ones if you haven't done so already and if you have thank you very much and right down there below me comicblitz.com code third person pod three months three bucks buck a month unlimited comics you got it right there at your fingertips and also go check out our leftovers videos and our game of thrones houses videos yep and that's going to do it for us here. Once again, thank you everyone for watching and commenting and liking and subscribing and following and all those things that you do. Thank you very and much. And being awesome. And being awesome. We will see you guys on the next discussion. Peace out. Peace.